Hi friends! If you click the checkout to see how Pat's newest addition to her brush line, her Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Concealer Brush, and her Sublime Shine Brush Duo, then please keep on watching. Hi, my name is Alicia. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on my video. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeup, you can head over to my Instagram. I wanted to correct myself in saying that in my original Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection concealer video that will be up above and down below. I had said that this little brush was in the duo set when in fact the duo set contained two separate different brushes all together and this little brush was sold separately. I demoed this little brush in my original review video. We will still demo it in this video but I cannot wait to show you guys this duo. As you already see, I've used them because I couldn't wait. I pulled up the product page from Pat's site. I think these are now only currently sold on her site. I don't know if Sephora or Selfridges will eventually get them to sell. This set is $64. Right now it is only sold as a duo. Who knows if she will sell them individually in the future. Runway Radiant application begins with the Skin Fetish Sublime Shine brush duo. Mother created this couture coupling for highlighting, contouring, and sculpting the face with her futuristic formulations. Mm. Discover captivating control, beautiful blending, and luxurious lay down of the instantly iconic Chroma Lux Highlight Cream. Oh! Mm. I still have that little thing. I should find it. The Skin Fetish Sublime Skin Highlighting Trio, the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation, the Blitz Shades from the Mothership Eyeshadow Palettes, and more. Well, look at that. It actually outlines a lot of tips and application techniques with her different products in terms of how to use the brushes with. Well, that's awfully helpful. We will demo all three brushes as well as compare to the Zoeva brush. Many of you had said that is pretty much the similar, but I could tell you right now that, well, the shape of from Pat's Duo, the medium size brush, I think is the most closely related in terms of size and density. I could tell you right now that Pat's is more tightly packed and is a little softer. I'm, listen, you do what you want, you spend your money however you want. With that said, why don't you come in a little closer? That's enough. My apologies for it being so gray. I had to bump up the exposure because it is raining and the whole tint of the day is very, is very cool toned, you know? On the skin, I have my EV Technology Daily UV Face Muse in SPF 30. I did pick up an extra shade. I picked up LM13 because LM14 is a good color, but it looks a little yellow, which is okay but I wanted to see if the LM13 will just look a little more neutral. The concealer is not necessarily formulated for all over the face. Ideally, perhaps you would apply your favorite foundation first, or you will spot conceal first, and then go over with the foundation. With that said, I'm taking M16, which is quite successful as an all over shade, but I actually want to, excuse me, to spot treat first. So I take it around my nose, and on my post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And let's use the medium size brush and start punching that on. Now, I know that this brush is mighty expensive. This was in the duo, so if it was $64, uh, even split will be $32.32. But because the difference in size, I would suspect maybe we're looking at higher 20 but the small brush is 32, so maybe this is actually a good deal. I don't know. So that's how it looks like with just the concealer. So we were able to spot treat the areas that needed a little more coverage, especially here in this area. We have that little bugger here. I don't have as much on this side, so I don't need as much product. I love the fact that it's small and love this gold ferrule. And yes, yeah, it's very simple, it's very small. The handle is pretty lightweight. It doesn't feel super heavy, but friends, I like that for traveling. I love that I could pack this. It's not going to take up a lot of space and it's just an effective brush because it's angled and is tightly packed. I just feel it's so ergonomic. 
natural feeling i don't know in terms of how i like to apply product onto my skin just make sure i'm getting all the edges of that concealer yeah so this is what we're looking at with just the concealer you can see kind of the spots that I apply the concealer on because this is my skin tone and this is the concealer if I were to do a whole face of it I would do more of a swipe application just so I could get more coverage but we'll go in with Pat's foundation this is in medium six I'm taking about that much not a lot I'm warming it up here first and then I'll just take it on the center of my face and we'll take the bigger brush and start to pull that on I love this for foundation. I used it yesterday and I just love, I love punching in foundation. I don't swipe or buff because of my sunscreen. I wanna make sure the shield that formed when I allowed it to dry down stays intact and you don't wanna over manipulate your, your application, right? You wanna make sure that your sunscreen film is not disturbed. So punching it in in this way will ensure that. And if anything, I could take some directly from my hand and just take it on the parts of my face that I need a little more coverage. That's around my mouth as well. And if I need a little more coverage, so you see that one is aggressive. That, And what's tough for me to even look at it is it wasn't even that bad initially. It was just a little white head that if I just left alone, if I left it alone, it would have just come to the surface and I could have carefully extracted it. But when you start messing with it, you know what happens. It gets inflamed, it gets infected. And then every time you try to squeeze it, you get more and more aggressive with it and it leaves a more severe mark behind. This is the mini brush and I feel it's ideal for spot treating areas on the face like this. Also, on the nostrils this is like a weird spot where concealer and foundation can gather in a strange way it ensures that the product blends out well here as well i feel on either side of the high part of your nose amazing i spoiler alert loving it already <laughs> now let's take the lm14 and the LM13. What I'll do is take LM13 on the innermost part of my eye, like so, and then I will take LM14 more in the greater under eye area. Now just to be fair, let me take the Zoeva brush and start punching it in on this side so you can see the Zoeva brush in action. And I'll take Pat's medium sized brush and start going in on this side. Pat's is definitely more tightly packed, and because of that, I feel it has a softer feel, but if you don't want it to be tightly packed, then go with the Zoeva. Someone has said that Sonia Kashuk has a similar design brush, so get the Sonia one instead. Listen, friends, I'm not forcing you to spend 30-something, 60-something dollars on this brush. I chose to buy it because I wanted the whole system, and I was more intrigued by these brushes than I was with her previous ones that I did not buy, her foundation brush and that powder brush. When it comes to powder brushes and synthetic fibers, I don't even bother, okay? I don't. With the amount of natural hair powder brushes that I have that are immaculate, I was like, that wasn't... Mm. But with synthetic brushes and fun designs like these, you know, I can fix with it. You know what I'm saying? I have like a little divot there. I don't know why. Maybe because of my nose pads from my glasses. That's probably why. So here is the Zoeva side and here is the Pat Blend side. I think they look quite similar. I mean, if, if you're splitting hairs, I don't know. Maybe you'll find something different from what I'm seeing. I think they look very similar. I prefer the Pat brush simply because it's smaller than the Zoeva brush. The Zoeva brush is definitely gonna take up more space. I just like how the Pat one feels in my hands because of the smaller handle. But if you're a pro artist, maybe you'll prefer the Zoeva one because it would allow you to work farther away from your client's face versus you having to be in closer because of the handle length from the Pat. But I feel because of that, I have a little more control over 
how I want to blend the product on myself. So I feel this will serve you better if you're applying makeup on yourself. This either or, but probably better for pro circumstances. No! I dropped the Zoeva brush. <laughs> Not on purpose, okay. That was not a showgirls moment. So let's apply MD22, which I've been loving as my contour. You could do two application techniques. You could dot it, or actually let me place this on my hand first. Take the bigger brush and just start pressing that in. You can go in with the dots as I like to sometimes, or you could go from whether it be your hand or a palette. I think that fits quite nicely into the hollows of the cheeks. And then traveling up around my temple, cutting around the jawline here. Now, if you feel we apply too much, you just wipe the brush on a towel and then maybe you have leftover foundation, take some of that and just buff it down around the edges of the concealer or whatever contour you wish to use and that will soften the edges and will just soften the overall color application. Hello, you're gonna focus on me? Thank you so much. <laughs> if you want a more precise application, then you would take the smaller brush and also if you're one to sketch out your contour or cream bronzer or what have you, then the medium sized brush will be perfect for that. Taking whatever leftover I have on the back of my hand. Oh, actually, no, I'll use the smaller brush and just carefully, not all the way down, but just on the very top part of the nose and in towards the, the eye area. You are here under the lip and not as right under the nose here not a whole lot now we've seen on pat's demo videos like her little instagram videos that she also uses the brushes with the pressed powder now i typically don't use a tightly packed brush such as this for powder application but you know we're gonna do what mama does what is gonna hurt i'm gonna take the bigger brush with the light pressed powder this powder is like whipped air it's so whipped. Taking the smaller brush to make sure the concealer is all blended. I'm gonna press the light pressed powder under the eyes. Now, because this powder is so lightweight in texture, even though this is very densely packed, it's not gonna pick up a lot of product and appear heavy on the skin. So this is what we're looking at. I feel like it works out, right? If, especially if you don't like a lot of powder, using this brush is not going to be an overwhelming application. So I'm gonna blend that out a little more, sorry. Going in on this side. I'm taking the light powder on the center of my forehead, the chin. I'm taking the medium brush on the center of my nose. Now for all over the face, I saw a couple of demos where the makeup artist swept. It could have been just for show, so I'm not sure if that's the ideal application method to use with these pressed powders and brushes because this is what happens since the brush is so densely packed i feel that it kicks up a lot of product from the pan because it's so whipped but i want to punch it on i'm going to punch on the medium not bad i'm trying not to disrupt the pan too much so i'm lightly tapping in and then I'm patting down on my face. I much rather like to sweep, right? So that's my own preference. Some people like to stamp in their, their powder, whether it be pressed or loose. So maybe this will be good for you, especially down the, my smile lines. All right, we use all three brushes. We use all four concealers, two powders. Here's how the skin is looking, friends. I think we were successful in that powder application despite us using a tackly pipe tightly packed brush. My skin feels smooth, it doesn't feel heavy at all. Wow. This is how we're looking from afar, very much blurred and airbrushed. Oh no fam, I think these are more worth getting than her other brushes. I feel when it comes to powder application and such that natural hair brushes are the way to go. 
if you are okay with using natural fibers. There are synthetic brushes out there that claim to mimic the finish of a natural hairbrush when it comes to powder application. I know that Scott Barnes says that his synthetic fibers are very much like squirrel hair. He says that they mimic them and I would like to know if that's true. I might get one of his multi-use brushes just to see. I'm not in a rush to do so, but you could let me know down below about that comparison. But as far as these brushes, I just feel, I don't know, I love the fact that it's angled, but it's domed. It's not completely flat where I feel it just lends a very much, it just feels so intuitive while you're applying your cream and liquid products, especially here on the hollows, especially here on the hollows of your cheeks. This just fits beautifully well there. And I feel these are great sizes. This is an amazing size. If you're not a heavy concealer wearer, you're the dot, dot, dot type of person wearer, this size brush just fits beautifully in the innermost corner of the under eye and around these smaller parts of your face that needs more precise blending but you don't want to use a big brush for and this medium sized brush I feel is good if you like to sketch down cream products for your contour or what have you if you like to do the big strokey concealer application you could also use this I mean it will take you a while but you can use this brush to make Maybe blend out not bigger surface areas of your face but those that just need a little more than what the smaller brush can do like here this uh, hyperpigmentation patch that I need to tackle or more around the jawline what have you these are great I love them I absolutely love them I love how they look I love the gold ferrule I love the color of the synthetic fibers that they're like a beige to an off-white uh, it says Pat McGrath Labs here on the handle. The whole aesthetic, I feel, is it speaks to me. It speaks to me. When I see these brushes, I get excited to use them. I feel inspired. I can't wait to start my complexion step. And compared to the Zoeva, which I will now rescue because I, I dropped her. Hold on. Compared to the Zoeva brush, I mean, I feel like they're they're mostly the same. I'm looking at them closely. If anything, I feel Pat has more bristles in there. The sizing looks similar from the front. Maybe Pat has slightly longer bristles here on the front than the Zoeva. I think Pat definitely has more bristles in the brush. The Zoeva, not as much, but maybe that's better for you. Maybe you don't want it as tightly packed. You want a little bit of, of movement here in this brush. And you will prefer this one instead. This is the 146. I believe this is now sold at Ulta, so I can link it down below. Up to you if you want to use that affiliate link. But again, I much prefer to use the pat on myself. I just feel it it lends a better experience with makeup application when it comes to blending such as this. I mean, it works out with the longer handle as well, but I just like to be a little more close to my face when blending liquid and cream products. Let me know if you picked up the Shine Duo or the concealer brush. I am very happy with my purchase. I am happy that I bought all three. I love them for traveling. I love the fact that they are multifunctional, that you can use the concealer with them as well as the pressed powder. I will probably still use my squirreled hairbrush to apply my pressed powder simply because that's my preferred application method. But good to know that if I'm in a jam or I forgot a brush or I need to get the powder on. The combination of the powder being so lightweight in texture anyway that you can get away with applying it with a tightly packed brush like this is quite astounding. Again, not that I would do that regularly, especially if I have all my tools at my disposal, but good to know if I need to make it happen, it's not going to be a disaster. And that's just for the face, for the under eye, I think the under eye application with the light powder is is phenomenal. You just lightly tap it on, it sets the concealer just enough, and you're good to go. So this video was really more so to see the brushes in action to help you decide if it's worth your buying. If you feel you don't need them, 
then you don't need them. It's fine. If you want a brush that's similar in design and in application, the Zoeva, the Sonia Kashuk, as someone has suggested in my original review video, let me know, friends, if there are other brushes out there that are more inexpensive than the Pat. Drop them down in the comments and I will update either a pinned comment or I'll make note of those brush suggestions in my brush section in the description box. And that, my friends, is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I'll see you on here again with another review, tutorial, get ready with me, or Friday night chit chat. Take care and I'll see you again soon.